Hey guys, welcome to a special edition of Log, and this time, we are going retro game hunting. So Britt and I decided to go hit the road, hit the streets, see if we could pick up some retro games. We were primarily looking for some uh, regular Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Sega Genesis games to see what we could find. We have a few used game shops around where we live, so it wasn't much of a drive. But there's only two big players in the game in our city, so we decided to stop by both and see kind of what we could get ourselves into. Now, I wanted to buy something. I just didn't know what. I, I wanted the inventory to speak to me, as it were. Uh, but I knew I wanted to get something. I didn't know if it was going to be something rare, just something common that I've always wanted to play or play again. Uh, so yeah, you see us going to the shopping center. It was a beautiful day. It's one of the few days in Texas is it was like 80 something degrees instead of 120 degrees. But the first place we stop is a store called Games and Things. So it's not as big as the second store we go to, but sometimes you'll see some super rare stuff. And this time we started by looking at Wii U games. We have a Wii U that's kind of gone unloved. So we need to get some more games for that. Brett Holden, Wheel of Fortune there. And then they had this little end cap of strategy guides, and you never know what you're going to find with strategy guides. So you saw that little bundle deal of Advent Rising, and you see a bunch of sports ones. I don't even know what that would mean. Is it like a playbook? But Neverwinter Nights, Platinum. I was eyeballing that one. Uh, read through it, didn't actually have a lot of strategy in it. It was just kind of a game manual. But we did see Professor Layton and the Diabolical Box, Inbox, complete which is really rare, especially if you see, uh, at least for here, because as you can see, the other DS games just have that placeholder art and look kind of ugly, but they had that personal cooking game that had the box. <laughs> but seeing a Professor Layton uh, was pretty good. Walked back to the retro wall and saw the kind of anime and animated series wall. I thought of Marco, so I had to get some of this footage to show him some Robotech. Got some uh, speed grapher down there. I think there's a Voltron box set. Yeah, there it is. Uh, just, you know, some some stuff, some collections of stuff. And so we hit the back wall, kind of the retro wall. And as you'll see, we weren't necessarily disappointed, but it was a whole bunch of sports games. Madden and NBA and triple baseball and World Series baseball and other kinds of baseball. I did see, though, this uh, birthday blowout, the Bugs Bunny game, one of the first video games I ever remember playing, ever. Saw that, brought a smile to my face, so I had to show it to the camera. Uh, just kind of browsed, and so and it was the same thing. So this wall, I mean, if the games are out in the open, they're probably not worth money. Oh, hey, American Gladiators. Yeah. Um, but if those games are out in the open like that, probably not worth a ton. Uh, you see some USB retro controllers there, some DDR dance pads. Uh, N64 controllers, same thing for the N64 games, you see a lot of quarterback club and things like that. There's a few PS1 games on the wall there, kind of going a little bit. You see Tomb Raider 3, uh, it's a siphon filter, Gran Turismo down there, Spec Ops games, so more sports stuff, nothing too out of the ordinary. It is funny though, because I walk off here, and then I actually go back to the PS1 wall because I did see a game. Here we go. I did see a game from my childhood. Road Rash 3D. As you all know, I'm a huge Road Rash mark. And Road Rash 3D is terrible. Came out for N64 and PS1, but I played the hell out of it growing up. So once again, it was good to see it. Green Box, greatest hits copy. And then you're talking old school. You're talking uh, Atari and um, some paddle controllers down there. I think I view it here in a second. Yeah, scroll down. They're all in like Ziploc bags. There's some <laughs> right there. So we move over to the Game Boy, and this was set up kind of a price tier list. So you saw, you know, these games are $6.99, these are $7.99. We saw some Game Gear games there too. Nothing out of the ordinary. They had some loose cartridge GBA games like Fire Emblem, but they were charging like 20 or 30 bucks for it, which might be the going rate, but I don't collect GBA, so I don't know. But here's some money right here, man. Final Fantasy Tactics, Castlevania, Front Mission 3, Xenogears, Vagrant Story, I mean, that's some hot hits, and a lot of them were in decent condition. Uh, they had some cracks on the on the jewel case, but those are easily replaced. And then we come up here for the kind of more popular and worth more uh, cartridge-based games. So the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and then, of course, Ocarina of Time, which I already own. And then three copies of Goldeneye, one with a mustache drawn on. <laughs> that must mean it's more rare than all the other ones. 
but you saw Super Mario World down there, uh, Revenge of Shinobi, kind of on the Genesis side. I didn't. The managers were kind of looking at me a little bizarre. I don't know if they liked me filming. Um, <laughs> uh, Hoshigami Ruining Blue Earth, very rare game, but I didn't jump on it because it's just the disc. So yeah, I saw some stuff here, and I was like, well, let's go. You know, maybe we should go to the other shop. They might have some more stuff because at the other shop a little behind the scenes stuff. I used to work here for about two years of my life. I worked here. Uh, so I knew they probably had a little higher quality selection. And yeah, we walk in and Legend of Mana greets us. Not a full box thing, just the uh, just the game, but you know, Legacy of Kane, Soul Reaver. So a lot of these had kind of fake box art made for it and printed off, which is something that we would do every day. But Mega Man X4, full green label, greatest hits copy. On the back, it had a little uh, crack on the thing, but nothing too bad. I mean, that's a full, complete game. And some love for Metal Gear. And VR missions in original black label case. Good stuff. Just kind of view a little bit. As you can see, there's just more of a selection here. And the games are in better condition. And I don't say that hating on the other store. It's just the other store. Whenever they get stuff, it's very, very rare. Um, they will get the more rare stuff but it's once a year or something. Here, the, the stuff isn't quite as rare, but it's better quality, better condition. Say, <laughs> Rebel Assault 2 in the full uh, double case in the best game ever made, Masters of Terrace Kasai. <laughs> uh, Tenchu's under it though, for serious. And then of course we got Tekken 1, 2, and 3. Tomb Raider's under that. So yeah, you can kind of see a full, a more full collection for PS1. I need to scope that out. But then we moved over to Nintendo and saw, I just went straight towards Double Dragon. They had one, two, and three. I'm a big Double Dragon guy. And, you know, Ninja Gaiden, just the old beat em ups and platformers. Uh, Legacy of the Wizard, which I've never heard of. It's probably terrible, I don't know. Uh, but some games that aren't terrible, you see Galaga there. Base is loaded, pretty good series, but ooh, some good stuff right down here. We got Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar. And then right beside it, Ultima 3, which is uh, Exodus right there. So, overall, solid, uh, solid little NES collection right there. Super Nintendo, I felt, didn't fare as well, because once again, man, look at all the Maddens and NHL games, and, you know, they, they were cooler with me filming here, because, you know, I used to work here, <laughs> so they know I wasn't up to shenanigans. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, see Jungle Strike and Desert Strike and uh, Barkley Shut Up and Jam. But before, before we left, I did see Super Mario Kart Yoshi's Island uh, before we moved over to the more rare games, Rival Turf. And then I saw this game and it made me laugh. If anyone tells me what this is, Mario Presents Preschool Fun. I bet it's you match shapes and learn what a circle is. Uh, but Well, yeah, we headed over to the Genesis and I beelined towards the Fantasy Star. So they got Fantasy Star 4 right there. 40 bucks just for the cartridge. Ooh. Uh, 20 bucks for Fantasy Star 3, uh, Generations of Doom, right there. I wanted to get a good shot of that, because, yeah, that's the actual original retail box for that Fantasy Star 3. You see Mortal Kombat 3. So Genesis had a little bit better of a variety, but now here's some money makers: Zelda, Majora's Mask, and Ocarina of Time, and Yoshi's Story, all those N64 complete games. And then this Violence Killer, I don't know what that was. It looked like an import of some sort. Uh, but you see Persona 4 there. A way better copy of Jade Cocoon. Uh, Final Fantasy VIII, Persona 2. Uh, you see Mega Man X6, but up above it is Brigandine for $99.95. For a small $100, it can be yours. Um, but then, all oh, the highlight was Shining Force 2 in box. I didn't even have enough on me for that one. I didn't even ask how much that one was but also lunar eternal blue for the sega cd representing they got some collector's edition stuff down there for sale as well pretty nice stuff they were getting kind of busy so you could see a few retail workers walking by i didn't want to really get them on camera but you see a lot of joysticks the older school stuff and then you have some of the old retro systems so you see the uh, genesis down there both the model one and the model two we'll look at it in a minute uh, NES stuff, Castlevania 3, and then Final Fantasy 1. I, I was real tempted. I was like, ooh. But I'm going to wait to see if Video Games Monthly sends me some good RPGs. You know? Because um, you never know what you're going to get with them. And that's a good thing. Of course, what used game store would it be if it didn't have every Pokemon 
just all kind of right there. Old school Game Boy, a brick Game Boy right there. Yeah, here we go. So you see the top loader NES. Uh, yeah, Model 1 Genesis with Sega CD. Model 2 Genesis, Sega CD. Then television right there. So, I mean, overall, and what did I actually pick up? I gotta get Fantasy Star 3, man. I had to get it. That box, it was in great shape. Um, it had that little tear on the side, but I mean, it even had the retail hanging hook, you know, where people would get inventory. Now, I'm showing this. I actually own a legal, uh, a very legal emulated copy uh, through the Sega Hub that came out on Steam. So if we ever needed high def footage of this, this is the best way we can go about doing it. And the thing is, Fantasy Star 3 was kind of the black sheep of the family. So Fantasy Star 2 really put the series on the map, in my opinion. Fantasy Star 4 is still considered one of the best Japanese role-playing games ever made. Definitely the best one on Genesis. But uh, Fantasy Star 3 was sort of, I don't know, it was a, kind of, it was a little different. It had a cool generation system, almost like a Fire Emblem game. But it was easy, and I'm, I remember playing it, but I had to show it some love. Now I got it in my collection, physical box. Got a really good deal on it. They actually sold me the box with it. Normally they don't, but I requested it. They were cool. Said yes. And the cartridge itself is in really good shape, too, and I wanted to show that. So, you know, it didn't come with the book. I will say it did not come with the manual. Uh, I paid about $15 to $18 less than what it's going for on eBay. But you could argue because it didn't come with the manual. Uh, maybe that's about how much the manual is by itself. I don't know. We'll, we'll take a look to see if we want to make it complete or not, but very happy with the quality of the cartridge, of the box itself. So overall, pretty decent day. Uh, hit me up, kamidahobo.com, for all of the episodes of this and of Brothering Around. Hit me up on twitter.com slash kamidahobo and the brand spanking new facebook.com slash kamidahobo for some behind-the-scenes stuff. You can see me share some stuff, some old goofy posts. It's a lot of fun. What did you guys think of the first retro game hunting video? If we do more, let us know. But until next time, guys, peace.